I'm Sheena Schieffer. I am a mental health counselor working in Muncie, New York, although I am currently in Jerusalem, in Yerushalayim, so a little bit of a time difference. I'm going to close my window. Um, okay, so I specialize in complex trauma and attachment work. And this, tonight's topic is on Yom Kippur and self-forgiveness. And the reason that I'm really excited about this and passionate in this topic is, is because of the overlap with the work I do. Um, so I'm going to be talking about some like brain stuff, which we do a lot of in trauma work, as well as attachment stuff, and then God and Yom Kippur, and how does that all come together. Um, I'm going to speak for about 20 minutes and leave some time for questions at the end. So it feels a little scary to be talking about Yom Kippur. Um, it feels like a bold move. It's a, it's a loaded, it's a loaded topic. It's a loaded time. Um, I think this year especially, a lot of us are facing confusion, intensity, anxiety around this year. Um, so I'm, I'm entering this with like a, hopefully, the sensitivity and the humility that something like this requires. Um, also because, right, like, something that I'm going to be, like, towing the line of, like, my role as, as a therapist and, you know, someone educated and trained in psychology and then also as a religious Jew and what that means for me personally and what that means as a therapist and as an educator and what what's this balance, right, between religious views, therapy, the ways they interact, um, are they really so different? Are they two totally different things? So I guess I, I want to say in advance that I know that that's like a, a tough line to toe. Um, and if, if things don't resonate, please take what works, leave what doesn't. Um, okay, so forgiveness, self-forgiveness. Where do we, like, so big, so, so big. So I want to start with giving some background. Um, I know lately, in the past, you know, wave of, of therapy and psychology, the brain stuff has been big. So I would love to spend a few minutes talking about the different parts of the brain and how they contribute to our experience of ourself and of God, which are very intertwined. Um, and bringing in the attachment piece, which is also so part of this, um, is that the relationships we have with our parents become the template for relationships we have with everyone else and also for the relationship we have with God, right? Because God literally is like the ultimate attachment figure. Um, so it's so interconnected. And so when we can zoom out and look at that, it can be really helpful to help us understand what's going on for ourselves when we're approaching this. So, the background information, right? The left brain, right brain. So the brain, I'm, I'm gonna really go back to the basics and this might be familiar, it might not. Um, there's, there's two hemispheres of the brain and they have very, very different jobs and hopefully they work together. Um, the corpus callosum, which is in brain words, um, the, the part of the brain that both helps them work together and then also helps them differentiate and not get in each other's way. Um, that can really be impacted by trauma, by whether it's like, you know, a one-time trauma or developmental trauma. Um, and a lot of the work in, in trauma therapy is integrating the parts of the brain, helping them work together. So what are these two parts? Right, so the, the left brain is our thinking brain, it's our analytic brain, it's our logical brain. This is the part of your brain that is being used when you're doing a math problem, when you're making lists, when you're trying to get somewhere, when you're like looking at a map, when you're, anytime you're like in that analyzing, so this, it can be very useful, right? This like math thinking, 
um, problem solving in a concrete way. Um, in the, in the, if the problem is two plus two, that's when your left brain is going to be activated. Um, this is also the part of the brain that overthinks, that loops, and we're gonna get more into that a little later. The right brain is your limbic system. It's the, brain, the part of your brain that holds all of your emotional experiences, really all of your, your, your sensing, experiencing self, that's all right brain. So this is the part of the brain that holds the capacity for empathy, for connection, for emotion, for emotional memory, for pleasure, for taste and sight, the experience of that, right? The experience of tasting something delicious, the experience of having a beautiful, connective moment. That's all happening in the right brain. And ideally, those parts of the brain are working together. Now, the funny thing about the left brain is that it thinks very highly of itself. And obviously, like, I'm, I'm saying these things in jest, you know. But the left brain will often think that it is the one that is experiencing or coming up with. Or So, for example, if you're near a stove and you, you touch a hot stove, your arm jerks away, right? So that's your right brain. That is your body sensing heat and... and, and automatically you move then your left brain thinks hot and your left brain thinks that it realized that it was hot but it did it your right brain thought, realized it was hot and sent the message to your left brain um 80 of the information that we're taking in from the world is coming through our through our right brain 20 percent is coming from our left brain so when we're thinking about our relationship with Hashem, our relationship with ourself. Ideally, that's all happening, all is a strong word, that's primarily happening through our right brain, right? If we think about like Torah and, and, and embodied Judaism, right? So all the things that we, we do, all the things that, you know, if, that, that we're observing, right? Everything is so experiential. This time of year, right? We build a sukkah, we shake a lulav, we, even when we're wait, davening, praying is experiential, right? We're saying words, usually very poetic words, um, very emotionally charged words. We're shuckling, we're, we're clapping al chait, we're, we're, we're using our body. The, the body is so, so, so present in Jewish practice. And it's actually that, like these experiential activities that are what connect us to God, to a higher power, to ourselves. Um, it's so, it's such a hard, it's this like to God and to ourselves is so, they're so interconnected, right? Like so much of the time the connection to ourselves is a connection to God inside of us. Um, it's, it's not something we can just like delineate. So I'm saying them as separate things, but they're not really separate and there's a lot there. Um... So, right, if we think about, like, what, what is this time really about? What does it mean to, to return, right? Teshuvah doesn't mean repentance. It means return. What does it mean to return to ourselves, to return to God, to connect, right? Like, to, to connect to our truest self. That's all right brain. And, and that is supposed to feel good, right? This is like connecting to our source, connecting to God is supposed to, is supposed to feel good. Because if we think about what is attachment, right? Attachment is, is safety, is closeness. The, like that's what the vacas means, right? It's closeness and, and, and to, a, to someone who has had closeness in a way that felt safe, closeness is gonna feel good. It's very complicated um, when someone hasn't had closeness Because then it's not going to feel safe, or it might not, or it might they might need to be in a process to allow it to to learn to feel safe with closeness, right? So when I'm saying closeness is good, it feels safe. That's like an ideal, right, or or something we we want or we hope for. But 
if we think about this connection and that we want it to feel good, when it doesn't, that's a sign. Like that lets us know that something might be off. We might want to look at this. We might want to try to understand what's going on. I'm just going to take a drink. So here's where the left brain kind of wrecks havoc. The left brain does not have the capacity to take in new information, to take in novel, like new, right? Anything new that we're experiencing, I want to retract the sentence I just said. The left brain <clears throat> does not have the capacity to experience new things. If we want to have a new experience, that has to happen on a right brain level. Otherwise, it's not new. Remember I said like when you're, 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 you have the thought hot and your left brain thinks it thought that. So when you have, when, when, oftentimes the left brain will think that it's thinking something new. So the prime example of this is obsessive thinking or like spiraling thoughts. Because what happens? You're having this thought and then you're like, oh, but I didn't consider this avenue and I didn't consider this possibility. And what if, wait, I know I thought about it, but what if I think about it this way, right? And it's like cyclical and spiraling. Da, 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 da. So every time you're having this new thought, the left brain thinks this, this is a new thought, but it's not actually. It's an old thought disguised as a new thought. And the only way to break out of that is to access the right brain. I think people hold this belief, right? When we, if, we, if I ask you like, you know, what kind of person do you want to be? How do you want to relate to the world? How do you want to experience yourself? How do you want to experience God? I think we can sometimes think like, I'm not that type of person that can do that. Or I have to become that person. Right? Like, I can't connect in that way. I can't, I can't, like, look at my past year and forgive myself because I, I just don't, I can't do that. And really, what it means is we're just not accessing the right part of our, literally, pun intended, the right part of our brain that will allow us to have a new experience, that will allow us to look back and say, when I did that, when I acted in that way, when I was in that space that wasn't me, that wasn't me connecting to my truest self, that wasn't me connecting to God, it, that is like a nuanced right brain kind of thought process that might be unfamiliar to a lot of us. And maybe the work is in just learning how to turn that on a little more. In, in also knowing that that's something that we actually can access and that ideally the, the practices that we're engaging in are what allow us to access it, right? So let's say someone's going to shul on Yom Kippur. They, they're, so they have to get to shul, right? Their left brain, like they have to like remember like, okay, how do I get there? Let's say it's a new shul or it's far. Okay, how do I get there? I make this left, this right, da, 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 right? So their left brain is what's getting them to shul. After that, as much as possible, we want to be working to access our right brain. We want to be leaning in to an experience that's going to help us connect to our the capacity that we all have to return to ourselves to be kind to ourselves, to know that God sees us so differently than we often see ourselves. When we can access that, this time of year actually stops being so scary. It stops being so intense because we're, we're literally having a new experience of it. To just give like another example, um, of left brain, right brain. Um, there's a pasuk in Tehillim, I believe because I say. Right? So the belief, belief is a, is a, 
is a right brain experience when we when we when we talk about it on a, on hopefully the way we're accessing it right very nice we could believe cognitively i believe in god but if i'm not feeling him it's not gonna help me you know be connected to him and be connected to myself right i believe because i say the saying is the experience and and that brings us right that allows us to deepen that that left brain the head that belief it, it allows us to bring it down right from our head into our body and and to then embody the things we say um it kind of goes both ways right that <clears throat> the say <clears throat> the saying as the experience and the believing as the experience, and the saying as the logic, and the believing as the logic, and and it's this like weaving in and out, this interaction between both, because we we need to have both. We need to have this interaction because that's what helps us be whole embodied people. So if we're trying to have a new experience of connection. And of forgiveness, right? And and if I think of like what what does forgiveness mean, right? Like it's a it's a loaded word. I think to me, forgiveness means presence. Like it's not. I think it's much more about the present than it is about the past. It's like I was there. I don't want, like, I'm here now, right? As soon as I recognize, I don't like that I did that. Not because I'm a bad person, not because I'm horrible. I don't like it because it didn't feel good. It didn't feel like who I want to be, who I am, right? It, it's, it's a return, right? It's not, it's not like I'm, 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 I'm accessing something already inside of me when I'm returning. So, that only happens in the present, right? Right brain is entirely present. Left brain is is like the the future thinking, the, the past thinking. So if I'm trying to have this new experience, I want to be in the present as much as possible. And obviously that is a lifetime work, right? Like that, this is what we're doing. How do we become present, right? And then I, I think... So many of us spend a lot of time working on that. Um, but I think that's what the essence of tshuva is. It's, it's this moment right here, right now. I am, I'm here. And in that here, the past doesn't exist anymore. Right? When we, we, when we talk about like real tshuva, means like we can turn an Avera, we can turn a sin in, into a mitzvah, into, into into something elevated. Like we can literally turn something bad into something good, which to reference another one of my favorite topics, like that is the essence of rupture and repair, right? That's what Juva is. It's repair. It's it's return. It's 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 beautiful, right? And we're like so overwhelmed by it and we're so anxiety stricken by it and we're, we're terrified because we've unfortunately received so many messages around it we have such misconceptions around it we also might have experiences with other attachment figures but then right if someone had a very specific experience in childhood or their parents were unforgiving or were scary then and that's going to be their experience of god of course, this is going to be a terrifying time, right? And there's a lot of work that we hope can happen around that. When we could step out and say, wait a second. I just need to be here now and, and working towards repair. And right, as am I allowed to reference other lives? Um, I've talked about the rupture and repair. So much of repair is just making room for the rupture. Is ouch, that hurt. I did that, you did that, that hurt. And I want different. That's what we're doing here, right? So, that, uh, now I'm explaining left brain, right? Of like, like the, 
I'm talking on a left brain, like explaining level. Um, and, and my hope is to also give you some just like right brain, like touchstones, right? Like how do we, how do we cultivate more presence? How do we bring more of that into our experience, into our experience of our, our relationship with ourself and our relationship with Hashem? So I think if we, like, for me, I find it very helpful to just be thinking about the senses, thinking about what, what is my body doing in the process, right? Like, what's it, what's it like to be shuckling, to, to be, like, moving back and forth embodying the prayers, the tefillos that I'm saying, right? As I'm, as I'm clapping al like this thing that we do on Yom Kippur, like, it's, to me, this is an acknowledgement, right? It's not like, a, it's not a punishment. It's not like, ouch, I'm going to punch myself. I, we're not supposed to like hurt ourselves when we're doing this, right? It's like, yeah, that, like I, that, that, I did that. I, I, I don't like that. Ouch, right? When we can acknowledge it, that's where the repair is. And when, when that, when we can trust and we can know that that's what God is inviting us to do, we can also do it with ourselves. And, and we can find permission to let go of these things that we're holding, that are weighing us down, that we're beating ourselves up for. Right? When we can, we can find ways to connect to like, the world around us, to, to this tea I'm holding right when I can feel this in my fingers. Like this, this is connection. And it, right, it, it seems so simple. Like I, it seems like I'm simplifying it. It's like, what do you mean? Like God is, what, what, what do you mean I'm connecting to him by like noticing the tea in my hands? And these are the avenues he gave us. This is how he created our brains. It's how he created our bodies. That when we access our right brain, that's where growth comes from. That's where change comes from. If we want to change something, we cannot do it without emotion. Emotion is what drives change. If we're just thinking about it, if we're just on a cognitive level, nothing's going to change. And so the fear that we feel, the anxiety we feel, the disconnect we feel, right? I didn't talk about that whole element of this. What if I feel totally disconnected from God, right? That too is an experience that we can lean into, leaning into the sensation, leaning into that experience and connecting from there, relating from there, instead of just from our thinking, analyzing brain. And this takes so much practice, so much work. So much. So I don't for a second want to simplify it, minimize it. It's, it's, it's a lifetime of Oda. And sometimes when we can just have a droplet of it, it can make the biggest difference. Because when we have a drop of a new experience, that changes our whole trajectory. That changes our whole experience of the world, of ourselves, of God. And, and that's... Tremendous. So, I want to try to wrap this up. Um, you're welcome to ask questions in the chat. Um, think, right, like, I started off saying that it's supposed to feel good. We want it to feel good, right? If it doesn't, that's our sign. Like, I would invite you to just be curious, like, to, to notice, by the way, the noticing, as soon as you're noticing, you're stepping out of your left brain. And that's like the biggest superpower in this work, to notice. To notice the thoughts, then you're already in right brain. I would invite you to notice, like, what are you feeling about it, right? What comes up? And like, oh, if it's scary things, if it's hard things, that's a sign that... You want to bring in more right brain. You want to try to dip in. Um, okay, so I'm seeing this question. What to do if you don't feel anything? Yeah. So what I would say is a lot of times feeling nothing is a cover for feeling too much. And 
we want to find ways to dip in to the feeling, um, ways that feel safe to titrate, like to just have one droplet of like, is there any small amount that I can feel, any, any little bit. Um, I would also say like, can we have compassion? Like it's really, it's really hard to want to feel, to want to connect. If you're in shul, if you're not in shul, if you're religious, if you're not, whatever it is, like, it's really hard to not feel anything because we are feeling, sensing beings and we are supposed to feel and sense. The same way we're, so, like, we need to eat and drink to function in this world, we need to feel to be able to function and connect. When we have it, when it hasn't been safe, when it's been too much, right, because we need... In order to feel, we need to have that model to us. We need to have safety. We need that feeling as a relational experience. If we don't have that, we're going to develop protections to shut it down. And it makes sense, but then like not feel like it's going to feel really hard. Um, so I would invite you to try to find compassion towards that and maybe like dipping in small ways. Um, I see another question. Do you have to ask your previous therapist and current for Mechila? If so, how do you go about that? Um, I say, uh, on one foot, no. Um, the therapeutic relationship is very different in that the things that are coming up, the feelings you're having towards your therapist, the things you're expressing, the things you're doing are expected, are, 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 there's room for it. And it's not personal and it's not um, that's not to say there isn't room to apologize for things, to take accountability, um, but I don't think there's an expectation, and I don't know that that's, you know, like, like I, I would, the same way I don't think a two-year-old has to ask their parent for mechila, for forgiveness, um, usually what's coming out in therapy that someone might have to feel like they need to ask mechila um, is very young, and so... I think right in the in the the healing is in in recognizing that and finding more presence in the now, helping the adult parts be adults, um, and working towards repair within the actual therapy relationship. So I'm gonna land here. There's always so much more to say, and there's like a, a sadness or a grief that comes in, like oh I wish I could still talk about this. Um, I want to say thank you for being here, and this life will be saved, please God, if that works out. And if I could just say one more thing, like, the, the compassion that I touched on for a minute, like, compassion is, is the soil for all growth. If we want to be growing, if we want to be connecting, when we can be gentle with ourselves and compassionate with ourselves and know that that's how God is feeling towards us because he's, he's literally our father, right? And not an abusive father, although when it feels like that, that's also really hard, right? But when we can, we can know that, that this is how it's designed, that the compassion allows us to connect because compassion is all right brain, right? That's what fosters growth. That's what creates beauty and life and, and, and just everything transcendent. It's that compassion that will bring us back to ourselves, back to God. Okay. Wishing you a good morning.